Welcome to another edition of MacBreak Studio. I recently returned from a trip from New York City where I was at the NAB East show. And for the most part, the show was uh, kind of boring, but Black Magic had the most amazing booth there. It was packed with people interested in their cameras, their switchers, their, their black conversion boxes. But what really impressed me was the amount of interest in DaVinci Resolve 16. They built a classroom on the show floor, and if you were lucky enough to get a seat, you would learn how to edit, color grade, sound mix, and do visual effects. Now, I was invited to do the visual effects class in which I taught Fusion. So I thought it'd be fun to show you what I taught them. So here I have three clips that I've edited into a timeline, all shot on the iPhone 11 Pro. This middle shot of Battery Park in Lower Manhattan is really great because it begs to have a title track to it. If you want to follow along, I've included a link to this clip in the description. DaVinci Resolve 16.1 has two different pages for editing, the edit page and the cut page. The edit page is for long form editing and the cut page is for short form quick turnaround editing. It doesn't matter what page you're starting from in order to create what I'm about to show you. With the playhead parked over the clip, click the Fusion button at the bottom of the UI. The clip is sent over to Fusion. For those of you who have never used Fusion or even heard of Fusion, you can think of it as Resolve's version of Adobe After Effects or Apple's Motion. In other words, it's specifically designed for creating visual effects and motion graphics. The first thing you need to know is that Fusion does not use tracks as its working metaphor, but rather it uses what are called nodes. You can think of nodes as image processing units. Image data flows into and out of nodes. When you open a clip into Fusion, you'll always see two nodes, a media in node and a media out node. The image we sent from the cut page is contained in the media in node. The image is then sent to the media out node, where the final composite is sent back to the cut or edit page, wherever you started from. The yellow line with the arrow represents the signal flow. Above the node editor are two viewers. What appears in each viewer is really up to you but typically you would view the final composite in the right viewer and the node you're working on in the left viewer. Select the media in node. Press one to send the image to the left viewer. To send the image to the right viewer, press two. The white dots below the nodes indicate the active viewer for that node. We see two dots because this node is sending its image to both viewers. Select the media out node and press two. If the white dot is on the right, the image from the selected node is being sent to the right viewer. If the white dot is on the left, the image is being sent to the left viewer. Below the viewers is a time ruler whose readout is in frames, not time code. Press the space bar to cache the clip and play it back. Once a clip has been cached, it will appear with a green bar below the viewers. To build anything in Fusion, you'll need to use this palette of tools that appears below the transport controls. They're grouped into a related set of tools by these vertical separators. The first group contains text and paint tools, the second group color correction tools, the third group transform tools, the fourth group masking tools, the fifth group particle tools, and the last group 3D tools. The tools you see here are a subset of a much larger set of tools located in the effects library but they appear here because these are the most common tools you'll often reach for. Let's add some text. In the first set of tools, locate the text tool and drag it into the work area. With the text one node selected, press one to send it to the left viewer. Currently, the viewer is empty because we haven't typed anything yet. To do this, you'll use the inspector to the right. Using the text entry box, I'll type out battery park. But you can type out whatever you want. I'll change the text color to yellow and increase the size just a bit. Great, but now we need to connect this text node to the image pipeline. To do this, you'll use a merge node. It's the first tool in the third group. Drag it over the connection line while holding down the shift key. When the connection line turns blue, release the mouse. Merge nodes have three inputs represented by these triangles. The yellow input is the background. The green input is the foreground, 
and the blue input is for masks and other transparency data. To composite this text over the background, you'll need to connect the output of the text node to the input of the merge node. And now we see our text composited over the background in the right viewer. Cool. The text can be moved around by using these on-screen controls. If you don't see the controls, make sure the text node is selected. So you've completed your first basic composite. Let's step this up a notch by using a different node to track the background. Select the Merge node and press Delete. The Tracking node is not located on the toolbar. In the Effects Library, under Tools, locate the Tracking category. Here, you'll find three different trackers. We'll be using the simply named Tracker. Let me show you a quick way to add this node to the pipeline. Make sure the Media 1 node is selected, then click the Tracker icon. The node is automatically inserted between the Media In and Media Out nodes. Notice the Tracker has a foreground input, just like the Merge node. However, it's often best to track the image first, so the text won't get in the way of our track. With the Tracker node selected, and the Media Out node sending its image to the right viewer, locate the green tracking box. Click on it, and it'll turn red, making it active. The way a tracker works is that it looks for repeating pixel patterns within a defined area then creates X and Y coordinate data that can be applied to the text or other objects. It's basically an optical illusion that will make the text appear as though it's part of the environment. Whenever you track something, you need to think about the distance the object will be from the viewer. If we wanted something that was floating in the foreground, we would need to track a foreground object, like these pier pilings. If we wanted to place the text in the sky, we'd have to track one of the background elements, like a building. To track from the beginning, drag the orange playhead to the beginning of the clip. Make sure your mouse pointer is over the upper left corner of the pattern box. Then drag the box over the first pier piling. To get a good track, you want the object to be in sharp focus with good contrast. You can adjust the size of the pattern area by dragging on the edge of the inner box. The outer dotted box is a search pattern box, where the tracker will be looking for that very specific pixel pattern. If you have a lot of movement in the shot, you'll want to make this outer box quite large to account for the larger motion of that pattern but this is a fairly gentle movement, so we'll keep this box at its current size. To track the text, click the Track Forward button in the inspector. The track analysis will take a few seconds. Then a completion box will appear that you can dismiss. Playing the clip back, notice the tracker did a really good job of tracking the peer piling. Next, you'll need to connect the text node output to the tracker's input. But we're not seeing the composite yet because we've not told the tracker what to look for. With the tracker node selected, click the Operation button in the inspector. From the Operation drop down menu, choose Match Move. In the Merge menu, the tracker will merge the foreground object, which is our text, with the background, which is our video clip. Now play back. The text perfectly tracks in the scene. To change the position of the text relative to the tracker, return to the Trackers button, then use the X and Y offset wheels to position the text where you want it. To change the text attributes, select the Text node, then in the Inspector, make your changes. By the way, you can make your changes while the clip plays back. And now for the best part. Once you're finished, just click on the Edit Page or Cut Page icon, whatever page you are editing in, and your Fusion composite will be right there as a clip in your timeline. There's no dynamic linking, no round tripping, no headaches. It's simply one-click integration back and forth. So if you like what you saw, I produced a six-hour DaVinci Resolve tutorial that comes with all the media so you can follow along like you were taking a class with me. And the best part, is it's DaVinci Resolve certified, which means after you've watched the course, you can take their exam and become certified. Right now, we're offering the course at 30% off if you use the code right here. And if you want to see more about the training, just click the link in the info section. 
So super excited about the training. Check it out. Thanks for watching another edition of MacBake Studio. We'll see you next time.